All of the reptile and amphibian species that you know and love require very, very different amounts of rainfall depending on the habitat they come from. For example, desert species love lots and lots of sun and not a lot of rainfall. Here in Pennsylvania though, it's a little bit of a different story. They like a little bit of daily rainfall or every now and again, may not even have to open the umbrella. And some of our favorite species from tropical habitats like a very, very heavy storm every single day. But no matter what kind of reptile or amphibian you like to keep, it's important that you give them the amount of water that they need on a daily basis. So follow these tips and tricks so that you don't end up giving too much or too little water to your favorite animals. Hey guys, I'm here at Tim's house with his bearded dragon, creatively named Lizard, and his turtle, you guessed it, turtle, because we know that different reptiles require different amounts of moisture in their daily life. These guys live in one of the hottest, driest places I've ever been, the Australian Outback. And these guys clearly live in water. So let's go talk about the different requirements of moisture and how we provide it to the reptiles we care for at home. Bearded Dragon's natural habitat couldn't be any more different than that one we created here in the Leap Lab. In the Australian Outback, bearded dragons love to live in areas that are hot and dry. While it's much hotter and drier than a tropical rainforest, they actually like to live in shrubland or dry forests where morning dew is common. The natural vegetation in a bearded dragon's habitat is made of really cool plants like eucalyptus trees and westringia that hold water really, really well. What this is great for is the natural rainfall and moisture in that environment. Just like all of life on Earth, these plants and bearded dragons need water to live. Since rainfall occurs so infrequently in the desert, it's plants and animals that have adapted to be able to go long periods without rainfall. Bearded dragons and the plants that they share their home with get their water in two important ways. First, from the morning dew that forms, and second, from the occasional rainstorm that passes over the desert. Now, the bearded dragon's natural habitat receives only about 10 to 18 inches of rainfall in an entire year. And a lot of times, as soon as that rain hits the ground, it evaporates immediately. So how do we make sure to provide our desert species with the perfect amount of simulated rainfall? Well, a common way that I'm sure all of us have seen uh -huh. is making sure they have a water bowl that's available to drink or bathe in. But is this really the best way to provide water to our desert species? But well, you may notice that bearded dragons and a bunch of other reptiles have heads that kind of are like a funnel. This is actually one of the really cool adaptations that they have for drinking. As morning dew forms on leaves and on the reptiles themselves, it actually comes down the funnel toward a point at the front of the mouth where the animal, like a bearded dragon, can just lick it off their own face. So how do we simulate the morning dew we talked about? Well. We use a 10 to 15 second light mist every morning and that provides available water for our beardies to drink. Because you can't perfectly replicate nature at home, a 10 to 15 second morning mist may not actually be enough water throughout the day. So it's still recommended by most reptile experts, us included, and I wouldn't call us experts, to also keep a bowl of water for desert species to drink from and they're also gonna bathe in it. So that's how we simulate that morning dew for our desert reptiles. But a lot of our reptiles that we keep live in places that receive a lot of rain in their natural habitat. How do we properly care for them? Tropical species like our beautiful carpet chameleons and our panther chameleon, Mr. Tinkles, live in much wetter environments that have a lot more available moisture than a bearded dragon like Mr. Lizard had. But as reptile keeping has evolved over time, so is the way in which we like to mist our tropical terrariums. In nature, a tropical rainforest provides morning dew, just like we saw for bearded dragons, but also has a lot more rain on a daily basis, which provides a lot more available water for both the animals and the plants that live there. We want to simulate both the morning dew and that rainfall at our homes. Here in the Leap Lab, we like to have a misting in the morning and then let our terrariums dry out a bit in the day. And then we have an afternoon misting event to simulate rainfall. While misting more for tropical species is important, Doing it in the wrong way may lead us to have an oversaturated terrarium. But before we talk about tips to make sure we're misting correctly, let's talk about one other surprising reason to provide more or less rainfall seasonally. Many reptile keepers start with just a single pet, but as their interest in reptiles grows, they want to start expanding that collection through breeding. Here in the Leap Lab, we're really, really proud because we've had some great success 
breeding some really unique species like these Europlatids fantasticus. And we found through a lot of trial and error that especially with these tropical species, it's really good to have both a dry season and a wet season. In the dry season, you missed a little less. In the wet season, you missed a good bit more. But how do we increase the amount of mist that we do for that wet season without having our substrate turn into a soupy mess and invite a whole host of other problems? Too much water during any one rainfall event, like pouring in water from this watering can, can quickly lead to your terrarium becoming overwhelmed with water. This leads to stagnant water that can invite bacterial infections and also waterlog your substrate. So how do we fix it? Using a mister like this one allows us to set both the interval between rain showers, but more importantly, how long the actual rain shower is gonna last. While in nature there's morning dew and an afternoon shower, typically, at home our terrarium can't stand one big shower because it needs to dry out a little bit in between. By using a mister that has settings that are programmable, we can easily increase the total number of times it rains throughout the day, but most importantly, we can reduce how long it is that each rain shower lasts. This ensures that there's always adequate water available while also allowing our terrarium to dry out a bit in between. Substrate's looking pretty good. What biotope are you doing it for? Thanks, dude. Yeah, I'm doing a uh, rainforest, like a tropical rainforest species. Sure. What about the drainage layer? Uh, I'm going to use one of those misters. You can control the interval, so I'm not like worried. It'll be able to dry out in between. Well, that works, but what about when we increase the rainfall events during the rainy season? <laughs> drainage in your terrarium is super important to consider when you're planning out your misting schedule. While we know that there is a rainy season, where you're gonna be providing more water into your cage on a daily basis, it's vital that you also provide a way for the water to drain out of your substrate. A drainage layer made up of clay balls like the ones in the terrarium here is a great way to provide drainage, but it may not be enough when you create that rainy season every year. Whether you siphon out the excess water or put a drainage hole in the bottom of your terrarium, if you notice the excess water is building up, you need to make sure to remove it. Soupy substrate attracts disease can kill your plants, and it makes it so that your animal has nowhere to go to find dry ground. Rainfall and the water that it provides is absolutely critical to the health of our plants and our animals. But there comes a point when you might actually provide too much rainfall and then you just end up with a flood. Hey, Jack, what are we gonna do about this flood thing? No matter how good of a drainage layer you have or how short you reduce the intervals from your mister, sometimes there's simply just too much water for a given terrarium environment. Now, a common mistake that a lot of reptile keepers, myself included, make is that they don't pay enough attention to each terrarium's specific needs. So the more planted that a terrarium is, let's say you add some new plants to make it look more beautiful, well, the more water that it can take up on a given day. The more drainage that your terrarium has, it allows more water to flow through. But what if one of your plants dies? Or what if your substrate becomes clogged up with dirt? Or what happens if somehow your mister puts out too much water. Well, if any of these things happen, a terrarium can quickly fill with water and flood. That's why it's really, really important to monitor your terrarium regularly. You have to adjust the amount of misting you're providing and do it so that it gives you the right terrarium environment. Your terrarium's a mini ecosystem. If you pay attention to the signs and listen to your terrarium, things like wet substrate or unhealthy plants can tell you exactly if the misting schedule that you set up is going well. Always adjust your misting schedule to the needs of your terrarium. Listen to it and like I said, it will tell you if it's having problems. If you do that, you listen to your terrarium and set it up accordingly, you can make sure that all of the problems that occur from over and underwatering can be avoided. For a long time in the hobby, like in the 90s when I first started keeping reptiles, it was common to miss a lot throughout the day as a way to keep humidity up in your terrarium. Drainage would be provided through a constantly draining hole in the terrarium, but unfortunately, a lot of terrariums would end up very soggy and not good for plant or animal health. 
Foggers like this one weren't nearly as common as they are now. And what we knew about keeping a healthy terrarium has advanced a huge amount in the past few years. Don't try to increase your terrarium humidity by missing a lot more during the day. In our terrarium humidity video, we're going to talk a lot more about ways to increase the overall humidity without flooding out substrate or increasing the total rainfall to compensate for low humidity. Also, check out our substrate videos that show some really cool substrate ingredients that help make sure your substrate stays in optimal health.